One easy way to increase the accessibility of your websites is to just use semantics in HTML. What that means is using the correct HTML element for the text or information you'd like to convey. Here's an MDN example of using the H1 element as a heading. And this is a bad example because here they're mimicking the style of the H1 element, but they're using a span, which has no semantic meaning. Now, when users use the H1, if someone is using a screen reader, they can jump through headings. They can use the H1 semantics in other ways. For example, if you have like a Chrome plugin that allows you to jump through headings, even if you don't have a screen reader, but if it's just a span, then this is just useless for the user agents or browsers. If you scroll down for this page, you can see a lot of semantic elements. One of them is using, for example, the nav element for your navigation, the section element for, for the section and so on. Now, let me show you a practical example of how exactly to use the semantics in HTML. So right now I have here, I have an anchor element that let me just delete that. I have an anchor element that I have made it to look like a button. And you're probably thinking, well, Stephanie, what's the, what's wrong? We have an anchor that looks like a button. And uh, if you press it, it outputs the text. So it works exactly like a button should. Why should I, what's wrong with it? Well, the problem with this is it's using the anchor element and it has no semantics whatsoever. So this is what usually web developers unfamiliar with accessibility do is they use anchor elements for buttons. And the reason they do that is because they don't know how, how terrible they are for user experience and for accessibility. I'm going to test this now using my screen reader to show you how bad it is. Okay. So I'm going to launch my screen reader called NVDA. Welcome to NVDA dialog. Hello, Google Chrome. Hello. I'm going to press tab now and select the button again. Visited link output text. There we go. See, the issue is that even though this is a button, the screen reader says it's a link. So that means when users select it with, uh, with uh, the keyboard, the screen reader says it's a link, which means that they're going to be confused and they're going to think they're going to be redirected, where in, which instead what this is going to do is just going to output some text. So they're going to get bad information, which translates to bad user experience and bad accessibility. I want to show you other disadvantages of using the anchor tag as a button. See, if when I hover over my fake button, I still get the message on the left bottom corner showing the URL. In this case, the URL is just a pound sign because it's actually not a real button. Another thing I want to show is if users operate the site using high contrast mode, it's going to show up as a link regardless. Let me turn on high contrast mode and show you. So I'm going to go to my, let me go to my search at type high contrast mode, and I'm going to press space bar to activate it. And since high contrast mode only works on the Internet Explorer and Edge, I'm going to turn on my Edge. Okay. And uh, you see how our button looks like a link, which is bad. So if someone is operating the website with high contrast mode, they're going to think this is a link. And uh, let's, let's say, let's say I copy, I create a button and we add the same text as the link above. So we save it. See, it shows as a button in high contrast mode. So it has many advantages to use a semantic element. Now let me turn off high contrast mode. Okay. So th the way to fix this link is of course, the easiest would be just to add the button element or what we can do is we can add the row button and make it activatable via spacebar. Because right now, if I press spacebar, nothing's going to happen because buttons are not, excuse me, because links are not being activated using the spacebar. The only way to activate the link is using enter. So we need to write additional JavaScript on top of this link to make it accessible. However, if we just use the, the button element, so right now I've selected the button element and I want to activate it. So I'm going to activate using spacebar and see how the shadow changes on the button. That means it is being activated. And uh, since I just, just wrote the JavaScript text to be element agnostic, I can just do this, remove the link. Okay. And now our button is a real button. So I'm selecting it. I can press space bar and the functionality is going to work because 
we're using the correct HTML element. This is why semantics are so important. So every time the as you as you saw earlier when the screen was landing on the button on the fake button, it was saying it was it is a link. So semantics are really important for screen readers. Let me show you another example. I'm going to go to the Y website. So the Y website is the home of the Web Accessibility Initiative. So they're like the parents of the WGAG. And uh, if you if we if we take a closer look at their website, see they have coded it with semantic elements. They have the nav for the navigation. Okay. They have the header for the header. Just anything, all of their content is very, very semantic. They have main, footer, and uh, I see a lot of people making the mistake of just using a bunch of divs and spans, which is going to be very detrimental for screen readers. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off, uh, turn on NVIDIA again, and I'm going to show you the elements list and how that helps with using semantic HTML. Welcome to an home web accessibility initiative. So you're probably thinking, well, Stephanie, so you might be thinking, well, Stephanie, how am I supposed to know which element to use? How am I supposed to know the semantics of each element? What I usually do is I go on Google and I type semantic element for a button or semantic element for a blog post. And usually I have a lot of results where people say you can use the semantics with this and this element. Okay, so this is the WISE website. I have um, turned on NVDA and now I'm going to output it on the screen, the elements list using insert. I have outputted the elements list using insert plus F7 and see how you can jump from headings to headings, form fields, buttons, and landmarks. Landmarks are the ones I showed you earlier. So the main, they use the main element, the navigation, they use the main navigation. See main navigation, move to, I can just move to. It's so easy to navigate a website with a screen reader that you have coded semantically banner this is the heading so if i if, let's say that i have scrolled to the bottom of the page with my screen reader and suddenly i want to go to the path to the heading so the the header element outputs is a banner in the screen reader world don't ask me why i think it's kind of uh, not very smart that they have different names for landmarks in html and the accessibility tree but never mind so but the banner is the header just remember that i can just do, put move to and i'll be ready right, right here as fast as possible see this is the the header element that's what the banner was in our accessibility list or elements list and you know you can i can jump through headings like i showed you earlier so if i want to check the news i'll just go to move to the news and they have coded this heading using h2 that's why it works if i change this heading let's see if it's possible i'm going to change it to a span which is not an accessible element okay excuse me a span actually you can still use span and div don't 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 think that you can't use them you can use them for example if you want to change the color or the appearance of some text or some elements Spans and divs are amazing. Just because they don't provide semantic meaning doesn't mean you shouldn't use them. It's just anytime you want to provide semantic meaning, don't use them at all. I use a ton of divs if I want to move elements, I want to make them look a certain way. That's absolutely fine. Actually, it would be bad if you use navs. I have seen some, some programmers who don't know anything about accessibility use like 50 navs on a page. Like they use a nav for every single link. <laughs> I kid you not. So that what that does is it's so detrimental to accessibility. However, we change this heading to be a span. Now let's turn on our, I'm going to press insert plus F7 and to, to find out where the news is and see with the headings, the news has disappeared because we changed it from a heading to a span. Now uh, let, let's try the same. I want to go see what else. Let's go here. And instead of a span, we're going to change it to a div. See, get resources for, so going to press insert plus F7 and oh so, so this one no it's gone oh, oh wait okay so right I didn't I didn't change the I changed the wrong element so div now we're going to do okay insert plus F7 and there we go the heading has disappeared from the headings list and then with links we can just jump to the links and it's just so easy and uh Remember, you can only activate links using enter. You can activate buttons using spacebar and enter. And that, that's just not about buttons. It's not just about buttons and links and any semantic, any element that you can make semantic, please do so. Avoid, avoid, avoid like the plague <laughs> using JavaScript or using JavaScript to make an element behave as if 
that is a semantic counterpart. So remember, semantic element, very important for accessibility. You cannot have an accessible website unless most of the elements are accessible. Now, if you don't have a choice, like you have no control over the front end, then it's okay to use JavaScript to mimic functionality. For example, if you're using, if your website uses Bootstrap or Foundation, those are some terrible, terrible CSS frameworks people love to use for some reason. They're so inaccessible, but if you have no control over it, then it's okay but don't use that for absolutely every single element.